What's up, Badge Hackers? My name is Troy Brown, and in today's Tradecraft episode of Hacker Warehouse TV, we'll be showcasing the One Bit Squared's Black Magic Probe to unlock some of the hidden features of the Bender Badge from DEF CON 24. We talked to Anonic Zor guys last year at DEF CON, just a few hours after they won the Badge Contest Wildcard Prize. Now, if you don't know what the Bender Badge is or are curious about the inspiration and the design process, check out our interview in that episode. The Anodic Zor DEFCON 24 badge, aka the Bender badge, has an STM32F103, which is an ARM Cortex M3 MCU. Now, one of the benefits of utilizing an ARM MCU are the standard JTAG and SWD interfaces. The badge was developed with UART. The familiar six pin interface is on the right side of the board next to Bender's eye. However, one of the goals of the badge was to be hackable, so it does have an exposed SWD interface, although it was never utilized in development. The Bender badge contains seven possible unlocks. These range from Easter eggs embedded within the badge to real world unlocks such as donating to the EFF or interacting with the Anodic Zor Master Badge. Each Easter egg unlocks special animation modes in addition to some advanced features like a basic 433 MHz spectrum analyzer. To find out about all the unlocks and animations, check out part two of the interview we did with them at last year's con. So, since a basic feature of the Binner Badge was to make it as hackable as possible, the Anodic Zor guys fully expect users to hack and unlock it without finding the Easter eggs, such as through the debug interfaces. So, today, we're going to show you how to use the Blackmagic Probe to hack your badge, unlocking it completely. The Blackmagic Probe provides GDB, also known as the GNU Project Debugger, to debug ARM devices, so it was a natural choice for this task. Now this tutorial assumes you have access to the debug symbols and source code, which can both be obtained from Anodic Zor's GitHub page. The procedure, as executed here, will require a 32-bit Linux machine with GDB, a Blackmagic probe, a 10 to 20-pin JTAG interface adapter, a few jumper wires, and of course, an Anodic Zor bender badge. Also, before attempting this technique, you should be familiar with flashing firmware to a device, running command line prompts in Linux, and the basic understanding of JTAG. This procedure can be broken down into three main steps. One, ensure Bender has the correct firmware. Two, connecting Blackmagic Probe to Bender. And our favorite part, three, hacking the Bender. First, let's pop in Bender's battery to get him booted up and go to System, then About, and check that the badge is running V1137LEAT SP4 firmware. Otherwise, the SWD interface will die after the bootloader is finished due to a known bug in the Arduino core. If the badge is running SP3 or earlier, it can be flashed over DFU. Just hold the button down during startup or reset to put the badge into DFU mode. The latest firmware is in the provision folder of the GitHub repo, and you can update the firmware via this command. Okay, now that we got the correct firmware, let's get old Bender hooked up to our Blackmagic probe, the BMP. Bender does not have a standard SWD or JTAG interface. The easiest way to connect to it is to use a 10 to 20 pin JTAG interface adapter, then use jumpers to connect to the Bender. Follow this diagram to connect the 20 pin connector to the Bender. Okay, everything looks good to go, but let's ensure the Blackmagic probe is connected by reviewing system logs via dmessage. Awesome, now we can get to hacking. First, let's connect to the badge with GDB using the correct TTY device and path to the ELF file. Next, add the badge source code to the source directories. Search for Bender with the mon swdp underscore scan command and recall that the badge uses an STM32F103 MCU. Now we can attach the debugger to Bender. Now this will interrupt the badge's execution. Of Easter eggs the Bender badge has, some are simple to unlock, such as the shell. Others are more difficult, such as having the master badge send an unlock signal. Since GDB gives us access to the badge's variables and internal memory, we should be able to modify data while it's running. The next step is to determine where in the code the badge is checking for unlock status. It is well known that the new bling modes are added to the menu with each unlock. So let's start there. If the badge is not already sitting idle on the bling menu, resume execution with the continue command and navigate to the bling menu, then interrupt it with control C. Next, use the BT command to print the backtrace. When I pause executions, we can see several functions being run. We see several menu functions, such as do menu, animation menu, and main menu. Now let's set up a breakpoint on animation menu and continue. On the badge, navigate back to the main menu then into the bling menu to force it to break at the moment the animation menu is going to be created. We'll then step through the code from here. View the code around the breakpoint with the list command. Notice line 295. The unlocked menu items are added based on the mask of the local unlock variable. Line 274 is where the unlock variable is created, which is coming from the function anx get unlocked. 
clear the animation menu breakpoint and set a new breakpoint on A and X Get Unlocked. Continue execution and we can see that the badge immediately hits the A and X Get Unlocked breakpoint. Review the backtrace and let's take a look at the source code. It looks like the ANX get unlocked is simply returning a global 8-bit unlock variable. Any comparisons above in the animation menu will fail, and no additional menu items will be added. Let's print the value of the unlock variable and see what's inside. Okay, so what we see is that the variable is full of zeros. How about we just change that unlocked to 0xff, which is all ones, to force future unlock checks like the animation menu above to pass. We'll confirm that the value has changed, then clear the breakpoint. Finally, allow the badge to resume execution. Go back to the main menu, then to the bling menu. Note that the bling menu now has 24 items. Also, pressing the left button from the main menu will show the and not XOR flag and light up all seven LEDs to indicate all seven unlocks have been accomplished. Awesome! We unlocked several items by changing the unlock variable in memory. Congrats, you just unlocked yourself a bender badge. But wait one second, it's not quite that easy. We want to pass along a challenge to you from the makers of the badge. Our variable hack did not persist in the NAND flash, so when you reset the badge, all the unlocks will be lost. Your challenge is to find a way to force the badge to maintain a fully unlocked state between restarts. Thanks to Zap for contributing to today's tradecraft and all his hard work as part of the Anodic Zor team responsible for what we think is the coolest unofficial badge from DEF CON 24. If you are the first to be able to correctly crack the challenge he put forth, be sure to leave it in the comments below because Hacker Warehouse will be giving away a special DC25 badge. That's it for this episode. I'm Troy with Hacker Warehouse TV, and as always, remember, keep it between the laws.